Thank you very much, Caroline. And I definitely feel like I'm a member of this family. Um, I'd like to begin by thanking President Sobotka, His Royal Highness, Mr. Martin Essel, ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues. I also particularly want to say thank you to Marianne. What a great honor it is to be able to be here today as you launch into the Zero Project Conference. A conference that not only has a mission of working towards a world without barriers, but it puts the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities at its core. It is great to see education the focus again. It was first discussed in depth here at the Zero Project conference in 2016, to which I had the privilege of attending. But we know, and we know this for sure, that the conversation did not begin then, and the efforts to make education systems inclusive of children with disabilities is not a new conversation. We have been talking about this for at least 100 years. And we have each taken different paths and modalities, which are often reflective of the development of our own countries. Where we are as countries and where we are as a planet today is not where we were 100 years ago. But neither is it where it should be. And while I will concede that progress has been made and we are moving, that movement has been very slow. We know too well that there are existing constraints and gaps, but we also know that it is possible, it is possible to leapfrog over them. It is possible for us to skip over decades of efforts that we know have not worked. You see, it is also important to recognize that the journey to inclusive education is a process. A process that takes time, one that we have begun to refine, one that we can go about more appropriately when we invest in understanding the context in which we're working. When we are mindful of where we are in the process in that particular country. And when we're cognizant of the resources that are at hand. To leapfrog over what has not worked in promoting inclusive education for children with disabilities, we need to focus on what we know. We need to focus on the fundamentals of inclusive education. Let me just hasten and say that there is no prescribed way to go about inclusive education. But that said, there are some basic principles that we all should adhere to as we work towards more inclusive education systems. And I should also say that no one has gotten this 100% correct yet. But if, we're, but if we ensure that our programs are child-centered, that mainstreaming takes place where appropriate and possible, and that all, and I underscore the word, all supports and services are available to children so that they can achieve their educational goals we can begin to recognize with more clarity what inclusive education looks like. But perhaps more importantly, we need to think about what inclusive education feels like. Because after all, true inclusion is not just the placement in school. It's an experience. It's a life experience. But I want to remind everyone of another point that is critical to this, to this discussion on education for children with disabilities. It is important to remember that education is not only about learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are, of course, important, important. And yes, of course, we want to see our children reading, our children writing, solving problems, and passing the exams. But there are other attributes that being in school can provide for any student and for all children. We know that social interactions that being in school provides for children of all ages is critical to their development. 
when any child, and in particular, a child with a disability, is excluded or hidden away, they not only are denied their basic access, right to education, but they're also hindered from developing socially, emotionally, and behaviorally. For these children to grow up and become full contributing citizens and members of society, their societal development needs need to be present in those earliest years of formation. And we need to ensure that that environment in in embraces them as a whole. And I think the words from Marianne really spoke to that point. Fortunately, where we are today is that there, there has been global, there have been many global, global movements that have pushed us to where we are. They have, press, they have pressed us to be more intentional about making sure inclusive education is reaching all students. And these include, but are not limited to, education for all, the Salamanca Agreement, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, in particular Article 24, and its accompanying General Comment 4. And all of, and all of these have contributed to the framing of the Sustainable Development Goals, which too makes specific reference to inclusive education. So this global architecture today we see has spurred an increase in the number of inclusive education policies and legislation across the globe. And this is a good thing. Following the Global Disability Summit hosted by the International Disability Alliance and the UK's Department of International Development that took place about two years ago in London, the World Bank and many other organizations made commitments to increase their efforts towards disability inclusive development. We at the World Bank made 10 commitments. The first one of the 10 commitments was a commitment to, to ensure that all education funded projects are disability inclusive by 2025. This is a big ask. However, knowing that education intersects with other sectors, we also made commitments to increase inclusion in the public transportation, in social protection, to increase the number of staff with disabilities in the World Bank, and to ensure that we promote our disability inclusion and accountability framework amongst our staff at the bank. So, with all of this in place, the World Bank has positioned itself to contribute to this very important development issue. We have been monitoring the success of the various projects funded by the Disability Inclusive Education in Africa project, which is a trust fund supported by USAID. And this is an exciting collaboration of partners signaling a move to action. And so, in an effort to move beyond the rhetoric to implementation, at the beginning of this year, we had a meeting of all our various grantees and we're very, very pleasantly surprised by the efforts that they were making towards inclusive education in seven different sub-Saharan African countries. These ranged from strengthening data systems to the creation of teacher training modules that promote more inclusive teaching and learning practices to increasing the number of resource centers to improve identification and screening tools. And very excitingly, many of these are well on their way. There was tangible excitement in the room as we, as we realized that what was happening was once, what was once a vision was now coming to life. And this enthusiasm has been absolutely contagious. Last year, we launched the Inclusive Education Initiative. And this is the initiative that is supported by the government of Norway, NORAD, and DFID. And this initiative invests in catalytic technical expertise and knowledge resources that support countries in making education progressively inclusive for all children with disabilities. The initiative accelerates action by working with both global and very importantly, 
country levels to help stakeholders and governments mobilize financing and develop programs that ensure inclusive education. So far, we have begun to work in three countries, and these countries are Ethiopia, Rwanda, and Nepal. So with my remaining time, Caroline, let me share a bit of what we've been doing. In Ethiopia, we are enhancing the quality of services available at the inclusive education resource centers. We are strengthening the quality of IMIS data. We are revising the screening tools and the training associated with administering those and scaling up the assistive technology for, a vision, and he for vision and hearing um, screening pilot. There is also, very importantly, an inclusive zero-class pre-primary program that is in development. And that's important to ensure that children with disabilities are coming into school with basic development um, play in, in place. In Rwanda, we are providing technical assistance to streamlining recruitment and teacher deployment, and also looking at strengthening disability inclusion in ongoing World Bank operations. We were asked by the government of Rwanda to help in disseminating their special needs and inclusive education policy. And in Rwanda, we're also working at coordinating, par par coordinating partners and providing technical assistance, again, to prove data collection and look at management systems. And in Rwanda, we're also providing grants to disabled people's organizations to ensure that the voice of persons with disabilities is present um, in, all the dis in all the discussions. In Nepal, we're conducting a comprehensive mapping and a, re and a review of resource classrooms and assessment centers, and we're identifying school-level constraints at, early, at the early childhood development stage. We're also looking at supporting MS data and ensuring that, that disability disaggregate, disaggregated data is collected. And we're also similarly providing technical assistance, assistance to large World Bank projects that invest, in dis, that invest in education in Nepal. Finally, in Nepal, we're looking at supporting targeted capacity building within, within the education system. And so, while we at the World Bank work primarily with governments around the world, we know that it takes engaging with a whole range of stakeholders to make this work. We are very aware that we cannot do this alone. This is a mission we all need to be working on together. It is time for us to collaborate more on our efforts, to coordinate our voices and our visions, so that we can make greater influence and see the impactful change we have been wanting to see come to fruition for so long. To do this, our thinking needs to be aligned so that we, so that we do not send mixed messages to countries in which we work. This requires that we synergize our approaches, speak with one voice, ensure our messaging is fit for purpose, and if we're truly in this to see inclusive education take root, we have to work together. We need to be careful not to underestimate the demand and the critical need there is for robust data and evidence. Nor can we afford to disregard the impact that strong monitoring and evaluation can make. If we are to push the needle forward on our collective journey, we need to know where the needle stands currently. There has been a lot of work on teacher training, but just we need to step back and ask ourselves some difficult questions. We need to ask ourselves, is that training working? Are we getting better learning outcomes for all children? Are the skills and the knowledge that we're imparting on teachers being executed properly and meeting the kids where they are? 
And so I'm really excited to be here over the next couple of days because I know many of you present are already doing that and I hope to learn from you. And finally, for inclusive education to be sustainable, we absolutely have to understand how it is financed. We have only begun to scratch the surface in understanding how countries are investing in disability inclusive education. We need to better understand how much is being budgeted for. Is it going towards infrastructure or is it going to teacher training? Do government officials see the impact of their investments? Are children with disabilities benefiting? And are we supporting children with disabilities at every level? Are we supporting their families? Are we supporting the communities, their schools? And we need to look at what financing, what, what financing is in place from identification to the completion of school and beyond. There are many links in this chain and we must ensure they are strong to ensure that a child with a disability is able to continue successfully in their life journey. We know the old, the age old adage, it takes a village to raise a child, and we know it's truth. We know it takes donors, we know it takes technical experts, we know it takes teachers, it takes parents, it takes policy makers, it takes researchers, it takes scholars, it takes persons with disabilities, it takes foundations, and of course, children. We have to make, we, ha we have many people that have so much wisdom to impart to this conversation on how to achieve disability inclusive education. And we want all these people, all of you, to be part of this conversation, to take this conversation further together. And so that is why today, at, that is, sorry, that is why today we at the World Bank are launching the Disability Inclusive Education Community of Practice. This is a community that will contribute to raising children with disabilities, ensuring that they too are able to access quality education. We will work to, together to grapple with challenging problems, but we'll also work together to celebrate and, show, and share the successes that we see. And we will listen to every individual who has a stake in this, and that is everyone. And so today, we invite you all to become members of this community, where we aim to share knowledge through documents and video footage of good practices. We will facilitate and nurture conversation but we will also welcome you to ask questions and initiate conversation. We know that the journey to inclusive education is one that we're all on, and I believe that through collaboration and coordination and multiple understanding of these challenges and the multiplicity of opportunities that exist, we will get there. We need to get there in a meaningful way and continue the journey forward. Thank you very much for your attention.